I need Jesus. And I just want to thank you, Father God, because you are so good. You are so faithful. Holy Spirit, we invite you tonight to come and be the teacher. Be our guide in what we are doing, Father God, because we can't do it without you. I pray, Lord God, for the miracles that have already taken place in your presence, Jesus, because there is freedom, there is healing. Lord God, there is restoration in your presence, and we know that you are here with us. Lord God, I step aside. Jesus, let me just be your vessel of what you want to say to each and every individual here today. And we all said, amen. amen. All right, so what I want to do is um, I, I want, so the, the title, Overflow, as you saw, it, was, it, it initially was our uh, summer retreat um, the title of our summer retreat, right? We give a title to our retreat. So this summer is going to be our fourth one in a row. Man, anyone's gone to the summer retreat? I really want to encourage you to do that. It's, it's an amazing investment into yourself to get a weekend away. And we just, this year, actually, our special guest is the one and only Pastor Jessica Roth. She's going to be joining us, bringing that Holy Spirit revival fire. And so we're pumped about that. Uh, she's going to be our guest, as well as just so many things planned. So make sure you register young adults outside. There's a tent for that. But initially started as just the title of our retreat. And uh, God put that title in my spirit from this verse I want to share with you guys in Psalms chapter 65 and 9. It's out of the NASB. It says, uh, you will visit the earth and cause it to overflow. You greatly enrich it. The stream of God is full of water. You prepare their grain for thus you prepare the earth. Now, this was, this was before really what we've been hearing from, some, uh, from our senior pastors about that that the Rock Church World Outreach Center is a stream in a dry land, and our stream is full. So to, to see the scripture really come, is, is feels like a, such a prophetic word and such a, a timely word for what we're doing. Because we are believing that God wants to overflow and enrich the earth. Come on, does anybody need to be enriched tonight? Does anybody need an encounter with Jesus that's just so full? And not just talking about to the, just to the fill up. See, because this is called the overflow. We didn't just come here tonight just to get enough so I can get to my week, go about my week. It drains me, drains me so I can make it to the next Sunday, right? Oh, my boss drains me. My kids drain me. My wife drains me. My coworkers drain me. Whatever it might be. So I'm just going to get, just fill me up a little bit so I can get to the next thing. No, who wants an overflow so full that you're overflowing so when those things try to drain you, you just kind of spill over on them. And all of a sudden, what would have taken away from you, now you're just pouring out your joy on them and it becomes contagious and infectious. And as believers, that's what we should be doing. Not letting them drain us, right? Does the, does the darkness overcome the light or does light take out the darkness? I don't know about you guys, but you try to go outside and let some sun in, all of a sudden the dark room is filled, filled with light. Amen? Right? That's, I mean, that's, that's just common sense. That's science right there. So we come to, to be overflowed. So if you're going to keep coming on these Sunday nights, you expect an overflow. Because we're not just coming to check a, a box of attendance. We're trying to come and feel the Holy Spirit and see what he can do in our lives. Because I need to be enriched. I don't know about you guys. See, because, to, uh, you know, uh, we'll, we'll save that one for later. Let me just, let me just, oh, man, did we get started yet? Come on. Hey, so... Uh, the, the title of tonight's message, I'm going to briefly share with you. Uh, as, you know, let's see what time it is. Okay. It's about 8.30, right? We're good? Okay. Uh, overflow of unity. That's the title we're going to be working with. So if you're taking notes, overflow of unity. So I, I want to share a little bit about my, myself. You know, I've, this is actually my first time on this stage uh, uh, preaching on a Sunday night. So maybe you don't recognize me. Uh, people think I'm Pastor Joel's son. Uh, I've gotten that one. Actually, quite a bit. Actually, but my parents are next to Pastor Joe. Actually, Pastor Joe is a longtime friend of mine. Been mentoring me since I was 13 years old. So shout out for spiritual brothers and fathers that mentor people. Amen. Uh, but I want to share a little bit about myself. I'm, I'm a millennial. I, I, I just had a birthday, but I, I, so I'm a little bit up there. I'm not of shift age anymore. Don't tell anybody. Um, but I'm still technically a millennial, but barely. But I'm a millennial that was raised by some Jesus people. All right, so uh, Jesus people, anyone know what Jesus people are? All right, so my parents, uh, they, they got saved uh, in, in the 70s, and they just got radically saved. And, and they just, they raised us. I'm grateful because they, they got radically saved. They raised their kids up in, in church, right? If you remember, I said I was a drug baby. I got drugged to church all the time. So I was raised up in the ways of the Lord. I was raised up going to church and understanding the importance of church. Thank you, Ashley. Come on for <laughs> So, you know, I, I, it, was, it was great having parents that were just radically saved. 
right? And if you don't understand, maybe the Jesus people or the Jesus movement was a movement that took place in the late 60s and 70s here in the United States. And, and it was just a, a revival that burst out. Actually, some of it was in, a lot of it was in Southern California. And we've heard Pastor Deborah share her testimony about being part of the Jesus people and the Jesus movement where people were just getting saved left and right. And it was really, it was that generation. It was the equivalent of the millennials, right? It was all these hippies that kind of had their free love movement and all these things. Kind of like all the bad things we hear about millennials, the hippies were just as bad, maybe worse. Come on, can I get an amen from some millennials? <laughs> Trying to call us crazy. Uh, but anyways, so here, here they are. Here's the hippies all of a sudden getting radically saved for Jesus. And so I believe, and, and, and this is what I'm believing. I'm believing that as, a, as, as a, a child or a byproduct of some Jesus people, I believe that God made promises to the Jesus people that God will fulfill it through our generation and the generations after us. See, because we're, we're talking about the overflow of unity, and we're going to talk about why, why unity is important. And we're going to talk about uh, the first thing is, is how blessings flow. Because God is a God of generations. I don't know, have you guys ever heard the term in the Bible, God, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob? Or maybe the God of our forefathers? I don't know, have you ever wondered why? I mean, you know their names, right? You remember learning them in, in, in Bible school or uh, in in the children's church and, and learning Abraham, Isaac, and Father Abraham had many sons, right? We all know, well, not all of us, but we know some of the, those songs, right? But I, I have the question, like, why did they have to just name all of them? Or what, what was the importance in declaring the God of our forefathers? Or, or why? Because it, it's common in Jewish prayers till this day that for them to recite the God of our forefathers or the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But what was happening, if you recall in these stories, as each of the generations made, God made a promise to Abraham, right? He made a promise to Abraham. And then, and then he made a promise to Isaac. He said, he introduced himself to Isaac, I am the God of your dad, Abraham. And I made him a promise, and I'm going to make you a promise. And Isaac remembers seeing the faithfulness of God in his dad, right? And then so here comes Jacob, and he introduced, Jacob, I am the God of Abraham and Isaac, and the promises I made to them, and I was faithful, I'm going to make a promise to you, and I'm going to be faithful in that same promise. So if you ever, it's not a coincidence that you hear the generation for my grandpa Abraham and for the generations to come, or for, or, or for the, the God of my forefathers, the faithfulness of the God of my forefathers, the promises that he made to them, he'll come to fruition in our lives. So I don't know what God promises made to you, but God is going to be faithful in them. Or maybe you're a parent who you're believing for your kids, and it looks like, oh, my gosh, they're doing their thing, or I can't believe they went this way. Where did I go wrong? God, I've been faithful. You said you were going to, God is not through with your life. He's not through with your children's life. He's not through with your friend's life, your co-worker's life. God is a God of generations, and he'll see it to pass. He doesn't make a promise that he can't keep. Come on. See, because what happens is how, how, can, how can this thing flow? Right? If, if, if God needs to be unified, he's going to do it through a generation. So I believe that God is saying that the, the promises that I made, in the, here's a revival in the land. Right? You see all these people getting saved, and it actually expanded beyond just our nation. It went into the U.K. and across the world, the revival that happened. And I know that he made promises to those people, just like he's made promises in my life, just like he's made promises in your life. But God is a God of generations, and what he promised to them, I know he's going to see it to pass. And I, I'm a millennial, but there's generations after me. There's already Generation Z. I already feel like, man, I don't get these kids. I don't, I don't get that music. What's the name of that rapper? I don't, back in my day, they used to do real beats. You know, like they used to be real, like what the heck? They used to actually use instruments. They, you know, like, so I, sometimes I feel like that old guy that peop, my dad used to be to me. Like, dad, you just don't understand. Like, right? Like, parents just don't understand. Oh, okay. All right. What's up? I'm old. It's all good, though. Hey, but, but God is, is going to see his promise. He's going to overflow through the unity in our lives. And that unity is going to come through the promises that we've seen God see, that we've seen God make. See, because some of you are believing and, and, and believed in, yeah, pastor, but you talk about this faith and you, you talk about this believing thing. See, but we, we live for some reason live in, in, in our time realm, in what we've seen. And we want to hold God to that. But God is not, he's not pressured by time. He's not rushed by time. Because God is going to see it through. And maybe there's a promise that he's made to you that he's going to see through your seed that you didn't even understand. See, because Jacob didn't even get the fullness of his promise. So can you say that God didn't deliver his promise? No, because God said he's going to bless through his generations. 
See, there are things that you're believing for that you might not see, but would you be okay if your children's children's children got that blessing? That's what God, God is in the business for the long haul. See, our life is but a vapor, and we're thinking, oh, my gosh, for my life. But God's thinking about your future and your future's future and all that. He, 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 he wants to redeem everyone to himself. See, we can't be so us-minded, so us-focused that, I mean, and I know we love our kids. I know we love the generation after us. I know we like being big brothers and mentors and, and doing those things, and we want to believe the best for people after us. But really sometimes, like, but at the end of the day, it's like, but it's me, though, right? But, but I mean, but what are you going to do for me, God? But what if God is using that promise and he's going to see it fulfilled through those after you? What talent are you holding on to that he needs to put that seed in the ground so God can water it and watch it flourish? I don't know. That's for somebody tonight. What talent are you holding on to that you've maybe been thinking like, oh, well, I just, I don't know what to do. I, I, don't, I haven't felt creative lately. Or I just, you know, I have that business expertise, but I just, I don't feel like it anymore. I, don't, I just don't know if it's to use. Put it in the ground and watch God do something with it. Maybe it not be for you. It might be for the generation after you. See, because these generations are going to be full. Wouldn't it be so cool? I believe, and I'm not just saying this for amens. I'm not saying this for claps. But I believe that we will see another Jesus movement in our lifetime. I believe that we will see, that we will see revival in our land. I believe that we will see our nation healed. I believe that this generation will be able to welcome a new movement of Jesus people that not only just touches because of the power that we have in social media, the power that we have through just a technology that we can see to the ends of the ends of the earth, that we can see Jesus come because of the fulfillment of his promises. So this isn't a joke to me. I get emotional. <laughs> I knew I was going to cry, and I got that ugly cry face, so sometimes I just might have to, those cameras. We don't have those cameras in the youth. I don't have to. <laughs> Man. Point number two. It, it, it marks us. What's the importance of the un our unity? It marks us. <clears throat> in Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. Turn with me. Everybody all right? <clears throat> Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 3. This is out of the New King James. Actually, we'll start 1 through 3. I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, this is Paul writing, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling with which you were called, with all lowliness and gentleness, with long suffering, bearing one, with one another in love, in verse 3, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. The unity of the Spirit. That word unity there in, in, in the Greek is called henatos. Henatos. Maybe I, maybe Dr. Coburn, I don't know. Any, any people that speak Greek, maybe I didn't get that right. But that, that means oneness. It means oneness. So, uh, uh, or of one spirit. So what that's saying is if you are a believer, you, you are, when you became born again, you're, you became new creations, right? And now part of our new DNA, part of our DNA is to be one with other believers, so we share that DNA that we are of one spirit, that we are born of Christ. So when we talk about having unity, it, it, it marks us. Let me show you. The only other time that this, that this oneness is used is in a little bit further down in Ephesians in, in verse number 13. Let me read it. Till we come, till we all come to unity of faith and the knowledge of the Son of God, a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. So we saw unity of spirit, and now here we're seeing unity of faith, right? So we all have that genetic code, and the unity of faith is talking about when we can come and be mature and grow. That's when we come in, into the house of God. Why do we have to go to the church? I just like doing church at home, or I like, I like, you know, I like streaming, or I like just doing it with my friends. Because when we come as a collective body, when we get around other believers, we, we join of one faith. We become, we do what God is telling us to do. We become one in our faith. And we grow into a mature place where we can understand and receive what God is telling us to do. Because otherwise you have people doing, this, oh, what feels right to you, what feels right to them. But this is my Christianity. This is, you can't judge my journey. You know, all this stuff. Right? I, I'm not trying to get into all that tonight. But understand that God desires us to be in unity. In unity of spirit and in unity of faith. This is best illustrated by Jesus. Right? Let's go with me in, in John. John chapter 17. The scene here is John. This is, John's about to be betrayed cl close to the end of his life. And he prays a prayer. You might, you might recognize it. 
But John is praying a, a prayer to God the Father. And he's praying for us. He's interceding over us. And, and, and this, this unity or, or understanding oneness is, is illustrated here in verse number, um, let's see here, 11. A couple of scriptures here. So in verse number 11, we see it. So we're going to start in verse number 11, and it reads, Now I am no longer of the world. This is Jesus talking, praying to the Father. But these are in the world, and I come, and I come to you. Holy Father, keep through your name those whom ye, or sorry, you, you have given to me, that they may be one as we are. That they may be one as we are. Before Jesus left this earth, his prayer was that we would be one as God the Father and God the Son and God the Holy Spirit are one. From the design, he wants us to be unified. We could spend all night talking about the differences that we have, our different cultures, our different backgrounds, our different ages. But what is God saying? From the, from the, from the code that we have in our DNA when, we, DNA, when we became believers, we are to be of one spirit and of one faith. And God, and he says it again in his prayer. Come on, you know it's important when Jesus says it twice. He comes down again in verse number 17. I'm sorry, in verse number 20 and 21. Let me read, read in 20 and 21. I do not pray for these alone, but for those who will believe in me through their word, that they may all be one as you, Father, are in me and I in you. Like he just read, that they also may be one in us, sorry, that the world may believe that you sent me. So wait, you're telling me that by our unity, the world is going to understand that he's the son of God. So wait. If I remember, by believing in Jesus, that's how we get salvation. So by being one, we see salvation. People can understand and receive salvation. See, the challenge is people don't like Christians. Newsflash, right? I don't like, for the most part, right? Like our media, popular culture is not a fan of Christians. Oh, you guys are biggest. You guys are closed-minded. Oh, yeah, Christians do this. Christians do that. Those people who call themselves Christians. We're not very popular in culture today, Right? But I would venture to say it's because of our disunity, because we oftentimes can highlight where we're not the same. Oh, but I'm not like those Christians, but I'm not like this and that. But if we understand what Jesus is saying here, by our unity, people will tell that God is who he says he is, and they will come to know him. So if we can be saved, or I'm sorry, if, if we can be united, if we can be of one mind, of one spirit, of one faith, then people will understand who we serve and they will desire to serve the God that we serve. And then guess what? That's when revival hits. That's when change happens. That's when your situation turns around. That's when those people that have been bothering you at your job or people that give you a hard time here and there because they know that you're a Christian, that's when that can change because all of a sudden they see that you are in unity. They see what you are about instead of what you're against. Come on, somebody. Oftentimes we like to, you know, just... Talk about, get on our soapbox, I don't like this, I don't like those people, I don't people like people who think like this, or I don't like those tongue talkers, or I don't like those people who don't talk in tongues, uh, I don't like this, I, I, and we, we talk about all our differences, but yet we're missing the main part that we believe in Jesus, and that Jesus died on the cross, and the same blood that paid for my salvation paid for yours, and the same DNA in my new creation that keeps us as whole is the same one that runs in yours. See, and... and Forgive me, I'm not, over, I'm not just overlooking real differences, real challenges that we have to make. And, and, and I'm, I'm just painting it over like it's all simple. But if we can understand that Jesus desires us to be one. See, because sometimes we just, we're comfortable in our separation. We're comfortable in our, I'm cool here, you're cool there. Keep the young people there, keep the old people there. They like it too loud. Hey, can you turn it up, please? I can't even hear it. I, I, need, I need to feel it in my bones. That's, that's part of me. Like, I, you know what I'm saying? Like, come on. Or, 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 you, you get what I'm saying? So in, instead of looking out everywhere else as to where we're different and why we're different and this position needs to be made here, if we can get to the crux, the crux of it and know that God is saying, I want you to be one. This is God's prayer. Before I leave this earth, before I go pay the price for everyone, God, let them be one as you and I are one. Because when they see that, people will know that I, you sent me here. People will know that I'm the real thing, that I'm the real deal. And people can be saved and lives can be changed. Amen. Number three. We're not going to go long. I don't, I, don't, I don't 
We won't be going long. Everybody still okay? Number three, why it's important? Because it keeps us strong. It keeps us strong. Full disclosure, I, I love our, the transparency of our, our church and our, our culture around here. We like to keep it as real as we can. In fact, the other day, I, 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 we pulled up into the parking lot. I was, I was having a challenge with my son. Right? Let's call it a challenge with my son in the back. I don't know if anyone's ever had any challenges with your children or anything like that. Or, uh, so I'm having a challenge with this, my son and trying to get him out of the car. And I'm pulling up to church before service. And I'm, I'm yelling at him or raising my voice, right, using a louder voice. And, uh, and all of a sudden, Pastor Dan and Jess pull up behind me, right? So I'm like, Andrew, no, 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 Pastor Dan and Jess, hey, how's it going? Welcome to church. Bless the Lord. It's such a good day. And, uh, <laughs> hey, come on, Drew. Come on, son. I love you. Let's get in church, right? <laughs> and then I go to my office, and I'm just like, uh, <laughs> man, that was so fake. <laughs> and I, 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 I went to them, and I was like, guys, I'm not going to even front. I was fake. I was doing the church fake thing. Right, like that, I, w- I was having a hard time with Drew. I was, I was yelling at him right before you came, and as soon as I saw you guys, I switched it on. Right, who knows how to do the, the switch? Right, like, hey, brother. Right, we, we, we can hear through your windows when you're cussing out people in the car, and then we greet you at the, We hear the reports. Right, we know what happens. Flipping off the pastor on the way to church because they cut you off. No, I'm just kidding. But so, a full disclosure, I, I spent the first part of this last week. I was, I was pretty frustrated pretty upset, right? I was angry in my heart. I was just like, I was, I was just mad. Maybe at my wife, maybe at my kid, maybe, I don't know. But what I noticed in, when, when I was angry, when I was upset, is that all I was thinking about was me and who made me upset and why I was upset. And what it did is it made me want to isolate myself because I just want to think about me and if I'm around you, then I'm going to, you're going to make me listen to you, oh my gosh, talk to you, and I just want to worry about me and why I'm upset, and I want to have my pity party over here, so I'm just going to isolate myself so I don't actually have to confront the challenge that I'm having, right? Is it just me? Okay, just me, sorry. Maybe I shouldn't be a pastor. I don't know. I'm not qualified because I'm the only one with the problem, but what happened is I couldn't be on the same page as my wife, as my son. I was just, I was upset. I just, I, I, I couldn't be, I didn't want to be around. And, and what I realized is that when we, when, when we get into our lane or our selfish or our pity party, we, we can't be unified. See, because we, we, lose, we lose our interest in other people. We lose what might draw us to one another that would keep us unified because I'm just, I'm just on my page right now. Or like, or they're like, oh yeah, we have this same thing. Oh, we're going through the same thing. But then you're racing to talk about who can talk more about it. Oh yeah, no, but listen to my story. But this is what my wife did. Oh, but this is what my husband did. Oh yeah, that's cool. I understand. Totally understand. Let me talk now, right? So it's just like, so even when you're trying to get around people that are go- maybe going through the same thing as you, often, oftentimes it's like, but I really want to talk about me. Want to talk about me? Want to talk about? Want to talk? You guys know a new country though, right? Mix it up. Number one on my line. I'm not a singer. That's my wife. She's a singer. I'm not. Uh, but anyways, so it attracts us from me. And I, and I remember, so in all these efforts, what, what, what came to my mind was that scripture in, in 1 Peter 5, 8, right? When we're talking about the devil roams around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour, whom being singular. See, when I'm isolated, all right, you guys see where I'm coming? You guys see where I'm at? All right, let's come over here. When I'm isolated, whom singular? When I'm by myself, the devil's roaring around seeking whom he may devour. I'm not with somebody. I have no unity. I have no protection. I have no one having my back. So here comes the devil. Here comes lies. Here comes depression. Here comes frustration. Here comes this rage. Here comes bad decisions because I'm by myself in my anger, in my frustration, in my own slump. Right? Because I'm not going to be unified with anyone because I, I got to do my thing. I'm Worried about me. See, but when we can be unity, it strengthens us, right? We can, we can be stronger together because we can have each other's back. When we can get into community, when we can get into to that one mind, right, we can see what God is doing through other people in our lives. I'm not saying don't be upset because it happens. I'm not, I'm not saying you can't do that, but be quick to get back. Don't isolate yourself. We can't isolate ourselves because I know I don't want to get picked off because the devil He's not going to come when I'm with my posse, though, right? Like, come on. 
I'm with somebody, I'm, I'm with people that are prayed up, I'm with people that in my connect group, I'm with people that I, I go to church with, that I sit next to. That's why you shouldn't sit next to somebody and not know their name, right? Because, they, oh yeah, I sit in the same place, I've been coming to church seven years, oh yeah, I don't know, not, not a single person. What are you doing, right? Like that's why we have opportunities for us to connect. We don't want anyone to do life alone because it's through that unity. And, and God wants to pour an overflow of unity so he can bring us into one place. See, because, you know, I was talking to my wife, and I, and I felt like God put this word on my heart of unity. And I was like, man, this is such a big topic. And I, I know I'm coming from, uh, from representing the young adults. And the last thing that we want to do, or I want to do, is kind of condescendingly come and say, you know, the older people just need to realize that they're, ne they're not really allowing us to do what we got to do. And, and that's not what I'm saying at all. But those, these are some of the thoughts that were going through my mind or some of the, the obstacles that I found myself facing. But I realized that, that you know, we've been hearing a, a, a common theme from our senior pastors, talking about bridging gaps, right, bridging gaps in the generations, bridging gaps in what we see. And, you know, I, and I, I didn't share earlier, but one of the, one of the inspirations that we got, I, we had the opportunity, some of our team, to go and visit a, a young adults ministry in Northern California. And it was, it was such a powerful time. Uh, 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 they met on a Sunday night. They had hundreds of people on a Sunday night, uh, young adults, uh, same kind of deal. But what I noticed was I saw young faces, college-age faces, young adult faces. But I saw some gray hair. I saw some older, not-so-young adult faces, right? I saw some people that were worshiping older next to a little bit, not as young, right? And so it was, to me, that so spoke to me. And initially, we were thinking about calling this service a Sunday night. We were going to call it the shift takeover, right? Because it's shift basically on Sunday night. And we're going to have our teams come, and we're just going to take over, right? Just kind of just we're going to pump up the music and turn down the lights. Everybody okay with the lights? I know it's a little bit darker. Maybe you're all right. Everyone's still all right. But, but, and, and we just wanted to take over. But then we realized that that, wasn't, that was never our heart of what we wanted to do. Because, in fact, it was quite the opposite. What was so inspiring was that, so it was a, uh, we had a connection with this ministry, so we had some chance to, had a chance to sit down with the leadership after the service. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm usually, I don't have a problem often asking awkward questions, so I'm just like, hey, um, there was some old people in here. What is that about, right? <laughs> just kidding. I didn't really say it like that. But, you know, <laughs> so I, I noticed that you have some older people in here. That, like, that's really cool. What, what's that about? And it's like, man, we, and uh, some of it, so it was their leadership team, and on their leadership team, they had some older people. They said, Man, as older people, we love coming to serve this generation, right? And we see, oftentimes, we see there's older people that serve in the youth. But often, like, this young adult, like, hey, why do you even have a young adult's ministry? Your church is a young adult's ministry. Like, it's young already, right? That's, that's your target audience. Like, why do you need a young adult's ministry? What's that about? But these, the, these older adults just got so much, they, they just loved coming and serve. They so believed in the next generation. They were able to put up with the music, put up with the darkness. Some of them actually liked it. You know, one of our pastors was talking about, man, I grew up when, like, Jimi Hendrix was out, and it was loud. So I'm cool with it, right? Like, come on, be real. You were a hippie, though. So all of a sudden, it's, like, it's too loud. Uh, but anyways, <laughs> so, here we, so here we are. I'm seeing all, seeing all these beautiful faces. And, and, then, and then you talk to the younger people. So, like, is it weird having some older people there? Like, no, like, we, we love talking. I don't know if you guys knew this, but outside of a generation that had war, and th we, we live in the most fatherless generation ever, right? So obviously during World War II, there was a lot of men killed, and so there was this huge generation of people who grew up without fathers. But we don't have a war going on, but yet there's a generation raising up without fathers, raising up without parents, or maybe grandparents are raising kids. So I don't know about you, but I believe us as a generation, maybe I'm just speaking, I, I want to speak for the millennials, correct me if I'm wrong, but we need some older people who will help guide us, who have been there before, who will help, who want to pour into us, who want to say, hey, look, good job, not so good job, try harder here. You know, not instead of like, oh, you lazy millennials, you don't know how to do anything. But th the thing is, we're still learning now about how Generation Z, the new generation is coming up. So when, when it looks like things are changing, really, no one's getting passed up. Going back to the beginning, when we're talking about Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, it didn't just become the God of Isaac and now the God of Jacob. They were all still included. You, you guys get what I'm saying? So, so, so maybe things around here change. Maybe a position changes. 
But that doesn't mean you're any less important. That doesn't mean you're getting, anyone's getting passed up. That doesn't mean anyone's asking you to leave your post. Or, but I've been doing this for 30 years. Now we're 30 years old. I've been doing this for 30 years. And, and, and guys, when we serve and when we can give into that, that just increases it. I know we oftentimes talk a, a lot about passing the baton. But I was thinking about that. Sometimes passing the baton implies like I stop running and, and you go. But if you think about it, they're still all on the same team. It's a relay team, right? So when one person gets the gold, they all get the gold. And there's not really just a passing of the baton. Try running at full speed. We thank you. Can we honor and celebrate those people who's Sunday night and who have helped build this church for 30 years? Come on, shift people. Those who have been and, and given and sacrificed and served. We thank you. We honor you. You guys ran as fast as you can. And again, not that you're passing baton, but as you open up opportunities for other people to do what you've done. You still keep running, right? Like, try to stop after your momentum is going full-fledged. It doesn't just happen like that. If you've been running all the way, you still have to keep running a little bit, right? You still keep running after you pass, and they go. And so as, as we, with maybe some fresh legs or with just a different outlook on things, and maybe we see things a little bit differently, and we want to try to run and try to go, be there with us. Run alongside us for those first few steps. Hey, you don't want to mess up on that step there. Hey, don't forget this. Don't forget that. It's beautiful seeing the usher. Our, our usher we have our shift ushers, and we have the main sanctuary ushers, and they're, they're uh, training them, and they're following them. We have our, our prayer teams that are saying, hey, this, we got to do this. Th th that's so beautiful to me because that's saying let's run, al run alongside each other. Let's, let's be united in what we're doing. We're of one spirit. We're of one mind. We're of one purpose. And that's how we're going to go take the world for Jesus. Come on, somebody. Can I get the band up here? We're going to be wrapping up. Yeah. Let's give it up for Jesus. I hope I didn't come off too soapboxy because believe me, believe me, like I said, I, I, I'm grateful for the home I grew up in. And, and, and the unique thing about that was getting to see the challenge, right? Getting to see raise, getting raised up in church. But I still had my time where I chose to walk away. But God was still faithful. And we were able to see the unity. And we were able to see the promise come forward. So as we, as we can, if we can get in that mindset that we are of one body, we are of one spirit, it changes. I love how Pastor Deborah talked about it. Perspective isn't how, it's how I see it, not how really how it is. It's never really, there's never how it is. It's always how you, through your lens. Because people might look at the two exact, at the same exact thing two different ways. Some people saw the music as too loud. Some people see it as too dark. Some people saw it as too light. Some people, or sorry, you guys get what I'm saying. I got confused there. Right? And not even just about church services. We look at a situation like this. Oh, I see that we need to love those, those people. That we need to love that community. I see is we need to talk to them about the, what, what really is, right? If we can get in love, if we can get on one page in terms of our perspective on how to love people, imagine what that might look like. See, because we all have someone that we're believing for. We all have someone, there's an empty seat next to you. We all have someone that we wish would be sitting in that seat, right? We all have someone that, like, I just, I, I wish they'd be sitting here right now. Maybe you're a parent in here, you just believe that, you just so desire, I wish my son or daughter would have been here tonight. I wish my parents would have been here tonight. I wish my neighbor, I've been believing for them tonight. But if we can get on that page of unity, then it affects us all. And as a church, this is the direction we're going. That's why I love this house. That's why I love our senior pastors. Because they understand the bridge. I was, I was, I was sharing, the def, by definition, a bridge is a road or a path that goes over an obstacle. Right? Whether it be a, a, a river, a creek, a, a, a boulder. It takes you over obstacles. So oftentimes as generations, we see obstacles. And we want to face them differently. But if we can build a bridge, a, a bridge that can allow us to overcome obstacles, overcome how we see our perspectives differently, then we'll really be able to see God do something. And there's people in this room that have gifts, that have talents, and, and, and you have yet to really give it because you didn't, know, you, 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 you didn't know how it would contribute. I challenge you tonight to give that, to give that gift, give of that resource, gift of that talent. 
maybe when you're older in this place, you have a young person that God's, you don't, you, you, maybe you didn't know it was God, but God, when you saw them, you're like, oh man, you really felt for them. Reach out to them. Give them a call. Maybe a text. Now it's kind of like, we don't like calls. That's too, oh, called me really? That's offensive. That's good. That's why I said I'm barely millennial. I, I appreciate phone calls, but anyways. Uh, <laughs> so, so you what I'm saying tonight, guys? Are we, every, is everybody okay with that? Come on, if God spoke to you tonight, let's give him a praise. Come on, if God really spoke to you, let's give him a praise. Remember, don't, don't keep coming back.